Hi guys, I'm Yusuf Ali Ahmed. Hello, my name is Ahmed Tariq. We are chemical engineering students at University of Technology Malaysia. What is chemical engineering? Chemical engineering combines three basic physical sciences, chemistry, physics, and biology, alongside with mathematics, and applies them to design, analyze, and control of chemical, physical, and biological processes. In a simpler way, chemical engineers transform raw matter or chemicals into a more valuable and useful product. Chemical engineers discover develop and implement creative solutions to current world problems in order to benefit humankind. They are focusing on improving existing processes or creating new ones. Chemical engineers sometimes are called universal engineers because their scientific and technical mastery is so broad. What does chemical engineering involve? It involves learning theory in lectures like physics, chemistry, mathematics, and much more. It also involves applying knowledge in practical lab sessions, exploring new technologies, developing industrial strategies and plans. What other skills do we gain in addition to chemical engineering knowledge? We learn about the critical thinking and problem solving, especially in teamwork. We also learn about project management and business insight. And for the most important question, what are the industries do chemical engineers mainly work for? Chemical engineers work for food processing, pharmaceuticals, fuels, water and sanitation, and oil and gas industry. And now we'll head towards one of the most iconic processes in chemical engineering, separation processes. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and very good morning to everyone. My name is Muhammad Shafi Arifin. I'm from 4SKTK. I'm going to talk about humidification and dehumidification right now. Stay tuned everyone. Humidification. So what is humidification? Humidification is a process where the moisture is added into the air without changing its dry bulb temperature. There is two types of humidification processes. The first one is heating and humidification and the second one is cooling and humidification. Alright, let's take a look at the heating and humidification system. This system is often used during the winter because the air is so dry and so cold. To overcome this problem, air conditioning system is used in house and cars. Firstly, the water is sprayed into the system to increase the humidity of the air. This process is controlled by using atomizer and the dry bulb temperature will not increase. Then, the air is heated by using heating coil to increase the temperature of the air according to the desired temperature. This process will increase the dry bulb temperature. Now, the air is warmer and more humid. The result of this process is the house is more comfortable to live. Assalamualaikum. My name is Mama Alif, so I will continue with the absorption process. Absorption process is a chemical process in which a gas phase is connected with a liquid phase and separating one or more soluble component which is solute in the gas mixture. Then transfer a solution into a liquid phase which is solvent. The absorber gas is then removed from the solvent and the solvent liquid stream is subsequently returned to the system. The process is called stripping. A liquid phase is immiscible in the gas phase. Its vaporization into the gas phase is small and negligible. Absorption processes are widely used in the chemical and oil and gas industry. There are several examples of application for this process. First, Absorbing HCl by using water in HCl production Absorbing NO in HNO3 production And CO2 absorption from a greenhouse gas Hi, I'm Hafiz And now let's talk about distillation Distillation is a process which a liquid or vapor mixture is separated into its component fractions of desired purity by the application and removal of heat.
The equipment used mostly are distillation columns. One of the most common industrial uses of distillation is the production of fuel from crude oils. Distillation helps to refine crude oils so that fuel such as gasoline and diesel can be made from their usable components. Hi, I am Umi Zulaifa. For the next process is liquid liquid extraction. Liquid liquid extraction, also known as solvent extraction, involves the separation of the solute of a liquid solution by contact with another insoluble liquid. Now, let's check out this video to see how the process of liquid liquid extraction in the laboratory works. For microscope extraction, firstly, mix a tube containing two immiscible layers and allow them to be separate. The aqueous layer can be separated from the organic layer using pipette. Always remove the bottom layer for better separation. Next, for base acid, acid base extraction, we can move a compound between organic and aqueous layers by changing the protonation state. The top layer contains the pink indicator. Adding base, remove a proton from the indicator. The deprotonated molecule is now blue and is soluble in the bottom aqueous layer. For microscale extraction, a separatory panel is used. Support the stopper with your hand, shake to mix the layer. Then, bend the separatory panel to release the pressure during mixing. To easily separate the bottom layer, open the stop cock and drain the bottom layer into a flask. The top and bottom layers are now successfully separated. Hi, my name is Prima. So next is solid liquid extraction. Solid liquid extraction or known as leaching, means that the removal of constituent from a mixture of solids by bringing the solid material into contact with a liquid solvent that dissolves this particular constituent. This process is to recover valuable soluble components from raw materials by primarily dissolving them in a liquid solvent so that the components can be separated and recovered later from the liquid. It is not always the objective to recover one particular compound in pure form from a raw material. Sometimes, extraction is intended to separate all the soluble compounds from the residue. The extraction method is applied to a wide variety of industry such as the extraction of sugar from sugar cane, the extraction of oil seeds from the virgin pomace, the extraction of coffee extract from the coffee beans and leaching of metal salts from ores.